All right, what's up, DevOps Days London? I may have told you a joke earlier, but this is probably going to be the least funny talk. Uh, this is customer-driven platform teams, or why my team has robots and why your team should have robots too. Uh, before I get started, I'd like to introduce myself. I'm Laura Wormsley. I'm currently a platform engineer at Depop, uh, platform engineering manager at Depop. I used to be a platform engineer, uh, but I've been in my current management role for about a year. Uh, I think it's pretty fun. Uh, I don't have Twitter, so you can't stalk me afterwards. So if you want to talk to me, you have to do it at this conference. This is Jamie. Jamie is an application developer who spends most of their time developing new features for their company and no time at all caring about how they run in production. Uh, they know that the service is deployed on Kubernetes, but Jamie hasn't used it before. <laughs> One day, their company decides, we're going to do the hot new thing, DevOps. Now, the platform team at Jamie's company is currently on call for the entirety of production, and they don't like it. So it's time for developers to go on call for their own services. But Jamie's a bit scared about this. They don't know anything about Kubernetes, so they start learning it right away. And then it turns out one day, in the staging environment, their application starts failing because they haven't replaced a secrets placeholder. They want to redeploy their service after setting the secret, but they can't. Disaster strikes because they don't actually have permission to redeploy their service. Uh, Jamie knows they could do this a bit faster if they had access to the, like, the stuff they needed to do, as opposed to rebuilding their service from scratch. So they go to see the platform team. However, there's a queue. Uh, it turns out that a lot of people can't do what they need to do. Uh, they're having trouble debugging CICD pipelines. They have access issues the same as Jamie. Basically, there's a whole lot of stuff that's stopping people from doing their jobs. Uh, this is now actually a story about Kennedy. Uh, Kennedy's a platform engineer. They've got access to absolutely everything, and thus far have been responsible for absolutely everything. They want to help Jamie get their stuff done and be a bit more DevOpsy. Uh, but Kennedy is feeling a bit overwhelmed right now. Their backlog is growing fast. They have all of their infrastructure maintenance work to do. Uh, and there's just a lot, a lot of asks on Kennedy's plate. So what do they do to prioritize and decide how to help the most people? It's user persona time, folks. Woo! Um, so, Basically, Kennedy's heard of this concept before, and they were thinking about the fact that if they thought about their platform as a product and the engineers at their company as um, users, they could do this. But I'm going to explain what a user persona is anyway. Um, so a user persona is a fictional representation of real-world user concerns. They help us work out how the work we do impacts the people that use it, and they help us answer these three questions. Who are our users? What are our users' main goals? And what are our users' main barriers to achieving those goals in the first place? Uh, and we decided to do this in the context of our platform. Uh, so we went and interviewed a whole bunch of engineers. We talked to juniors and seniors. We talked to people across departments. We talked to people with different roles. We talked to people with different tenure, and the tenure one is important, uh, to decide and group and see what problems people were facing. Interestingly enough, it turned out that our users fell into quite distinct groups based on how far away they were from working with infrastructure. So for example, Jamie, who spends all their time writing application code, uh, doesn't have the access they need or the knowledge that they need to do it. So what did we learn while doing this process? Involve your team in making user personas. I did too many interviews by myself when I did this, uh, and so thanks to my guys who helped me out, but yeah, get everyone else to help out. And don't ask leading questions. You can't rock up and be like, so what do you hate about Jenkins? Because you've presupposed the problem. Also, you have a unique opportunity where your users are a Slack message away. So make them review your notes and personas so that you get them right. Uh, also, share your personas with your organization, because it convinces the engineers that you care about them and care about making their lives a bit better. Uh, this is the biggest learning we got out of this. In-house tooling is hard. All of our in-house tooling assumed a high level of platform knowledge, and now we're actually we're kind of thinking about getting rid of a lot of it uh, so that people can Google their own error messages and don't have to come to us for help. Uh, and then this is now what we're doing with them. We are thinking about how our users are impacted by different p bits of work. We use it to inform our priorities. And also, when you do this, it has to be fun. They're all little robots, so they can be like, it's the green one. Also, the biggest mistake we made, we actually forgot to talk to our SREs. Uh, I'm sorry, guys. Um, so we actually made a new persona just for them, and we've removed their biggest access blocker, and now they don't hate us, which is fantastic. 
Um, so this is currently what we're working with, our user personas. Uh, we've got Jamie, Taylor, Morgan, Sam, and Kennedy, who is us, the platform folks. Uh, and we're using them to prioritize and do all of our work. And it's very exciting, because we actually have a prioritized roadmap, and I think our business is quite pleased that we do. Uh, thank you very much.